Shalom and welcome to part three and a half. If you haven't watched part three, please go back and watch part three of the Messiah in the Old Testament. And just to recap, this is the foundation of the understanding of where it says, King David shall be king over them all. Or he shall rule forever. It's talking about King David and his sons. And of his sons, one was prophesied to come. To be the king and high priest over Yahshirah in the Old Testament. And we're going to finish, wrap up this part three and three and a half. And part four is going to be focused on Psalms. So look out for part four coming soon. All right, let's get to it. Um, if you haven't downloaded this document, please do so. You can add to it whatever scriptures, but this is some foundational scriptures I found to combat all the evil and lies that's being told. That the Messiah didn't exist. He wasn't prophesied to come. And that King David would rule over us. In the eternal kingdom. When there was one prophesied to come from his loins. To rule over Zion. Forever. <clears throat> so if you haven't watched part one. Two. And part two and a half. Please do so as well. Before you watch part three in this part right here three and a half all this is foundational this is all for edification and building up uh, of the man and woman in Hamashiach and please take notes write down the scriptures and add it to your notes so that you'll be prepared for anyone that comes along and talks about the Messiah didn't exist in the Old Testament and that David would be their king forever Okay, so you have foundational strength behind you to present to them. So let's go right along to the war scrolls. And these war scrolls was found in the Chrome Rum Caves right next to the Dead Sea. A little bit north, west of the Dead Sea. That's where these were found. The scrolls, just like the Dead Sea Scrolls. These are also Dead Sea Scrolls. <clears throat> and you can download this, the War Scrolls, on my website for free. Just go there, click on References, scroll down, you'll see the War Scrolls. Click on that. And if the link is broken or something, let me know. And I have other references that you can download for free as well. All right. Here it says, The Coming of Melchizedek. Who is this Melchizedek? This is the one prophesied to come to be a high priest and also a king. Because he was a high priest and a king in the days of Abraham, whom Abraham gave a tenth of the spoil to. Because he was a king of Salem, a king of peace. And he was a high priest of the Most High at the same time. So that particular one was a foreshadow of Hamshak, who was to come out of the loins of Yehuda, out of the loins of King David, the one that's going to set things straight and set it right and judgment be placed in his hands, as well as the hands of his saints. Right it says, and concerning what scripture says, in this year of Jubilee, you shall return, every one of you, to your property. And this is a reference. And what is also written. And this is the manner of the remission. Every creditor shall remit the claim that is held against a neighbor. Not as acting it of a neighbor who is a member of the community. Because Yah's remission has been proclaimed. So we've seen this written in the law. At, and we've seen it as a foreshadow 
of what was to come to Yasharal way before it happened. Um, we saw it happen when Moses and the Yahshualites were led out with great substance. They were repaid. They were repaid for all the bond, all the hard labor they didn't get paid for. And the Most High gave them that and an abundance of wealth when they came out. And we know that this is going to happen again for what they did to the children of the Most High. He's going to make them repay for all their, their, their crimes and their sins, but also all the pay that they refused to give us and all the land they stole from us. And all the businesses and whatever else we we acquired when we were so-called set free. They owe us trillions of dollars. Do you understand this? And it's not just talking about America. We talk about in the in the islands of the sea, the um, southern uh, uh, South America. We're talking throughout Africa where we were scattered as well. Throughout Europe we were scattered. Throughout the what they call the Middle East, where we were scattered at, they owe us there as well. They owe us in India. They owe us in China. They owe us in Russia. They owe us around the world, brothers and sisters. Trillions upon trillions of dollars. We have suffered so much great loss, and every last dime will be repaid, and every last spilled blood will be repaid. It's in the book of the law. That's why you really got to learn the laws, statutes and commandments. Learn them by heart. Drill each other. Make some drill cards. Make a game out of it or something. Whatever it takes. Post them up around your house. Read them. Get to know them. Understand them. Because a lot of the things in the laws is, is, is things that's going to happen in the future. That's things that's written in Bible prophecy, a foreshadow of things to come, written right before your face in the book of the laws. Brothers and sisters, the book of the law is foundational. Brothers and sisters, just as Hamashiach is foundational to our faith. And this is page six, the coming of Melchizedek. The interpretation is that it applies to the last days and concerns the captives. Just as Isaiah said, to proclaim the jubilee to the captives. Who is the captives? Who need setting free? Us, Zion, the righteous. Just as, and from the inheritance of Melchizedek, remember in Daniel chapter 7, 9, 13 through 14, he was given a kingdom of dominion and, and uh, all nations would serve him. Brothers and sisters, this is the same one is talking about. The same one that's coming in the name of the Most High. Yahweh, our righteousness. Who will return them to what is rightfully theirs? He will proclaim to them the Jubilee, thereby releasing them from the debt of all their sins. And not just the year of Jubilee of the, releasing us the debt of our sins, but he will also recover all of our losses that they inflicted upon us and not paying us. He shall proclaim this decree in the first week of the Jubilee period that follows nine Jubilee periods. Then the day of judgment shall follow after the tenth Jubilee period when he shall atone for all the sons of light. So, we're gonna move into the J to the the trumpets blowing and the redemption of Zion. Then the day of atonement shall come, and then after that, we after everything is underneath the feet of the Most High, all evil put away, and that thousand years are fulfilled. We shall live in the tents of the Most High. After a certain period of time, Hashatan is released 
to deceive the nations again. And once the Father puts the end of all sin, we will live in the tents of the Most High after that. That's your Feast of Tabernacles. All those feasts are a foreshadow of good things to come. And a lot of things in the past foretell of good things to come. And those who trust in the Most High and believe in His Son and follow the ways that His Son set forth for us to follow. For this is the time decreed for the year of Melchizedek's favor. And by his might he would judge Elohim's holy ones, and so establish a righteous kingdom, as it is written about him in the Psalms of David. A Elohim uh, like being has taken his place in the council of Yah. In the midst of the divine beings, he holds judgment. Scripture also say about him, over it take your seat in the highest heaven. A divine being will judge the peoples. Now I'm going to go over a lot more scriptures concerning Psalms in, uh, in the next video. But we're just going to read what's here. Concerning what scripture says, how long will you judge unjustly and show partiality with the wicked? Selah. The interpretation applies to Bay Liao and the spirits predestined to him. Who are the spirits predestined to him? The, the evil ones, y'all. Because of all of them have rebelled, turned from Yah's precepts, and so become an utterly wicked. Up here there is a list of the sons of Bay Liao. It's this is the army of Bay Liao. Edom, Esau and his children, who is head and working behind the scenes in Moab over the sons of Ammon. He's over the sons of the east. We talk about the children of Median, the Medeans and the children, you know, the children of Keturah, the sons of the Esau, the children of Keturah. And Amalekite, and the Amalekites, which is also the son of uh, Esau. And let's not forget about Ishmael. They are also part of the sons of the East. Esau is leading them all to their destruction. The Philistines, the Hamites, some of those uh, Hamites, and bands of Ketum, the bands, the armies of Ketum, Chittim, which is a, a blend of Javan and Esau, brothers and sisters, and the Greeks. These are the bands of Kittim. Now, it also says up here, supporting them are those who have violated the covenant. So we're talking about all the other sons, all the other, you know, there are 70 nations outside of the 70 children of Yashara. I mean, uh, the 70 children of Jacob. Yeah, I said that right, Yashara. There are 70 nations. And these are the main ones on the scene. But the supporting them are the other nations who violated the covenant. Who broke the covenant. So let's go back down here. And let's continue to read on. But Melchizedek will carry out the vengeance of Yah's judgments. And on that day, he will free them from the hand of Belial and from the hand of all the spirits of his lot. That's all those wicked ones that working with them to keep us in bondage all over the world. And like with him will be all the righteous divine beings. Melchizedek is going to free us from this beast and the saints will be with him. We read that. The saints will be with them. Daniel chapter 7, 
13. Uh, uh, below 13 and 14, you'll find that the saints will also judge with him. Now, some of this is choppy because those war scrolls was flaked up, you know, and pieces missing. Thee is that which all the divine beings, the visitation is the day of salvation that he has decreed through Isaiah the prophet concerning all the captives. And as much as scripture says, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace. Remember, he shall descend upon Mount Olive and his saints with him. The ones that's been caught up in the air and changed to be his bride and be with him forever and judge the house of Yahshua with him. Who brings good news and announces salvation? Who says to Zion, your divine being reigns. Your holy one reigns from the throne. He's given a throne by the Father and he bears the Father's name. This scripture's interpretation, the mountains are the prophets. They who were sent to proclaim Yah's truth, the prophets, the saints, Yah's truth, and to prophesy to all Yahshua, the messengers, is the anointed of the Spirit, of whom Daniel spoke. After the 62 weeks, an anointed shall be cut off. That's Hamashiach. Daniel 9 and 26 is talking about Hamashiach being cut off. The messenger who brings good news, who announces salvation, is the one of whom it is written to proclaim the year of the Yahweh's favor, the day of the vengeance of our Elohim, to comfort all who mourn, to save his people, Zion. This scripture's interpretation, he is to instruct them about all the periods of history for eternity. And in the statutes, uh, the laws, statutes, laws, statutes, and commandments of the truth. And I don't know what else this is saying, but dominion that passes from Baal and returns to the sons of light. Now, Adam when he sinned, Satan became the prince of this world. And now, through Hamashiach, the world will be returned to the Father and his sons. By the judgment of Yah, just as it is written concerning him, who says to Zion, your divine being reigns. Zion is the congregation of all the sons of righteousness who uphold the covenant in turn from walking in the way of the people. Your divine being, your divine being, right? I mean, your divine being is Melchizedek, who will deliver them from the power of Belial. Concerning what scripture says, then you shall have the trumpet sounded loud in the seventh month. And we shall see all these things happen, brothers and sisters. And we are putting together, here little, there little, a, a, a big picture, a road map to salvation, brothers and sisters. In the one the Father has chosen to come and be that living, walking, breathing salvation for us. And let's go to Jubilees, Book of Jubilees. It's a few more scriptures, brothers and sisters. Y'all bear with me. This is Book of Jubilees, chapter 18. And we're going to read uh, 1 through 7, then 17 through 9. Wait a minute, is this chapter 18? No. Nope. Eighteen, where are you at? Oh, this is eighteen. Now this is a foreshadow of Hamashiach's sacrifice right here. And Yah said to him, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. 
And he said, Take thy beloved son, whom thou lovest, even Isaac, and go unto the high country, and offer him on one of the mountains, which I will appoint out unto thee. I will point out unto thee. And he rose early in the morning, and saddled his donkey, and took his two young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood of the burnt offering, and he went to the, to the place on the third day. On the third day, and he saw the place afar off. And he came to a well of water, and he said to his young men, Abide ye here with his donkey. And those young men was Eliezer, his first uh, head servant, and Ishmael, his, his uh, son with Hagar. Abide ye here with the donkey, and I and the lad shall go yonder, and when we have worshipped, we shall come again to you. And he took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son, and he took it, he took in his hand the fire and the knife, and they went both of them together to their place. And Isaac said to his father, and he said, Here I am, my son. And he said unto him, Behold, the fire and the knife and the wood. But where is the sheep for the burnt offering, Father? And he said, Yah will provide for himself a sheep for a burnt offering, my son. And he drew near to the place of the Mount of Yah. So let's drop down to 17 through 19. Y'all can finish this on your own if you want to. And Abraham went to his, to his young men, and they arose and went together to Beersheba. Oops. Did I forget something? I think I was supposed to read the rest of this. Well, anyway, brothers and sisters, we see that this is a foreshadow of the Heavenly Father sacrificing his only begotten son as a sacrifice of a sacrificial lamb to cover our sins just as we see many other foreshadowings throughout the book of the, of the father of the son being portrayed out through other witnesses his prophets, his servants, brothers and sisters. And let me let me see. I think I was supposed to read this part first. Fifteen through yeah, that's the reason why I was up here. But anyway, y'all got it. So right here at 16, it says, And in thy seed will all nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. And I have shown to all that thou art faithful unto me, and all that I have said unto thee, go in peace. And how was he, we to be blessed of the seed of Abraham? How much she act? That's how. And Abraham went to his young men, and they arose and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham dwelt by the well of Oath, and he celebrated this festival every year, seven days with joy. And he called it the festival of Yahweh, according to the seven days during which he w he went and returned in peace. And according accordingly have it been ordained and written on the heavenly tables regarding Yahshuaal and it see that they should observe this festival seven days with the joy of their, f of their festival. So at the Passover, we start the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And that's what he celebrated. And it was ordained on the heavenly tablets, tables for us to do this year by year, brothers and sisters. And it is a foreshadow of what took place with Hamashiach 
when he came down from heaven, born of a virgin Mary. And the tribe entered to the tribe of Yehuda, and of the lineage of King David. Brothers and sisters, to become that perfect living sacrifice. And he rose on the third day to be a a wave, a perfect wave offering before the Most High's throne when he went up to the high heavens. And he was accepted before his throne. And that is our hope and our faith and our belief. And y'all need to hold on to that and let not all these wicked ones trash your understanding. Let's go to the book of Jasher. And this is the final one, brothers and sisters. And uh, it's this uh, pretty much the same thing, but let's read it. And when they were going along, Isaac and Isaac said to his father, Behold, I see here the fire and the wood, and where then is the lamb that is to be the burnt offering before Yahweh? And Abraham answered his son Isaac, saying, Yahweh has made choice of thee, my son, to be a perfect burnt offering instead of the lamb. And Isaac said unto his father, I would do all that the Yahweh spoke to thee with joy and cheerfulness of heart. And Abraham again and said unto Isaac his son, Is there in thy heart any thought or counsel concerning this which is not proper? Tell me, my son, I pray thee, I am my, O oh my son, conceal it not from me. And Isaac answered his father Abraham and said unto him, O oh my father, as, thy, as Yahweh liveth, and as thy soul liveth, there is nothing in my heart to cause me to deviate either to the right or to the left from the word that he has spoken to thee. Neither limb nor muscle has moved or stirred at this, nor is there in my heart any thought or evil counsel concerning this. But I am joyful and cheerful, cheerful heart in this matter. And I say, Blessed is Yahweh who has this day chosen me to be a burnt offering before him. And Abraham greatly rejoiced at the words of Isaac, and they went on and came together to that place that Yahweh have spoken of. And Abraham approached to, to build the altar in that place. And Abraham was weeping, and Isaac took stones and mortar until they had finished building the altar. And Abraham took the wood and placed it in order upon the altar which he had built. And he took his son Isaac and bound him in order to place him upon the wood which was upon the altar to slay him for a burnt offering before Yahweh. And Isaac said to his father, Bind me securely and then place me upon the altar, lest I should turn and move and break loose from the force of the knife upon my flesh. And therefore profaned the burnt offering, and Abraham did so. And Isaac said, still said to his father, O my father, when thou shalt have slain me and burnt me before for an offering, take with thee that which shall remain of my ash to my to bring to Sarah my mother, and say to her, This is the sweet smelling savior of Isaac. But do not tell her this if she should sit near a well or upon any high place, lest she should cast her soul after me and die. And Abraham heard the words of Isaac, and he lifted up his voice and wept when Isaac spake these words. And Abraham tears gushed down upon Isaac his son, and Isaac wept bitterly. And he said to his father, Hasten, hasten thou, O my father, and do with me the will of Yahweh our Elohim as he has commanded thee. So just as Isaac was willing to be their final sacrifice and was filled with joy and was willing to go through it. So was Yahusha. And he fulfilled that which he needed to fulfill for the father. Just as Isaac is fulfilling that what he needed to fulfill for his father. And the hearts of Abraham and Isaac rejoiced at this thing which Yahweh had commanded them, but the eye wept bitterly whilst the heart rejoiced. And Abraham bound his son Isaac and placed him on the altar upon the wood, just as Hamashiach was placed on the wood, on the tree. And Isaac stretched forth his neck upon the altar, 
before his father. And Abraham stretched forth his hand to take the knife to slay his son as a burnt offering before Yahweh. Just as that soldier put that spear in his side and, and the blood and the water spilled out. At that time, the angels of mercy came before Yahweh and spake to him concerning Isaac, saying, O oh, Yahweh, thou art a merciful and compassionate king over all that thou hast created in heaven and in earth, and thou supportest them all. Give therefore ransom and redemption instead of thy servant Isaac, and pity and have compassion upon Abraham and Isaac his son, who are this day performing thy commands. Hast thou seen, O Yahweh, how Isaac the son of Abraham thy servant is bound down to the slaughter like an animal? Now therefore let thy pity be roused for him, O Yahweh. At that time Yahweh appeared unto Abraham and called to him from heaven and said unto him, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou unto anything unto him, for now I know that thou fearest Yah in performing his act, and in, and in not withholding thy son, thine only son from me. And he made that, he makes this part clear, thine only son. And Abraham, just like he says, you know, this is my only begotten son from above, He's making it clear, Abraham, Isaac is your only begotten son, but from down here on earth. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, a ram was caught in a thicket by his horns. That was the ram which Yahweh had created in the earth in the day that he made earth and heaven. For Yahweh had prepared this ram from that day to be a burnt offering instead of Isaac. Ain't that something? So you can imagine that when Noah was on that boat, this ram was right there. And uh, maybe the descendants from that ram, you know, the, that same ram that he prepared, kept having children and no one ever touched this particular ram. The Most High kept this ram from them. That son, the next son, or the most I kept that same ram alive that whole time until this point. I don't know which one. That's just speculation, brothers and sisters. But just going off of what the most I is saying here in the book, that he prepared this ram. Uh when heaven and earth was made. So it is quite possible that either one of those versions of the story took place. Either that ram stayed alive, went on the boat, and stayed alive after the boat, all the way up to that point, or that ram had children with another ram, and that sun line from that ram represents that 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 same ram so either way works brothers and sisters and this ram was advanced to abraham when satan caught hold of him and entangled his horns in the thicket that he might not advance to abraham in order that abraham might slay his son and abraham seeing the ram advanced to him and Satan withholding him, fetched him, and brought him before the altar, and he loosened his son Isaac from his binding, and he put the ram instead in his stead, or in his place. And Abraham killed the ram upon the altar, and brought it up as an offering in the place of his son Isaac. And Hamashiach was brought up as an offering in place of his son, uh, of, of Yasharal in place of us the ram is also a foreshadow of how much being prepared before the earth and the sun I mean the earth and the heavens was made he was prepared to do all this before all this was created brothers and sisters y'all see it this ram also represents Hamashiach, in place of us, prepared before 
the heaven and earth was created. It's a lot of foreshadowing of good things, brothers and sisters, happening. And Abraham sprinkled some of the blood on the ram upon the altar. And he exclaimed and said, This is in the place of my son. And the Most High sent a lamb from above to save Yahshua, his son. In place of his son, from his son, but his son from above as well. He was a son of Yahshua, but a son of the Most High first. And may this be considered this day as the blood of my son before Yahweh. And this is how we've been covered. And all that Abraham did on this occasion by the altar, he would exclaim and say, This is in the room of my son. And the father is in heaven saying, My son is in the room of you, brothers and sisters. And may it this day be considered before Yahweh in the place of my son. And Abraham finished the whole. And this is all the way from Adam through that holy righteous line through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And all the other sons and daughters of the world, of the earth, who believe in this. Join themselves to us. And all the seed of Abraham is blessed in this. And Abraham finished the whole of the service by the altar, and the service was accepted before Yahweh, and was accounted as if it had been Isaac, just as the son was accepted on our behalf, as if it was us. And Yahweh blessed Abraham and his seed on that day. And you who believe in a part of Zion, which is the, the nation of holiness and righteousness, the people of Yah, whether you are of the twelve tribes or grafted in from the other nations of the Gentiles. Brothers and sisters, do not let no one take your crown. Do not let no one take your salvation because many are being taken in these last days believing doctrines of demons and doctrines of men. So with that, I'm going to say Shalom and y'all look out for part four. And part four, we're going to go over the book of Psalms. And I believe there is there may be one more part to that. Maybe. I'm not certain, brothers and sisters. But that might conclude the series, part four. But there may be a part five. So y'all bear with me. And with that, I'm going to say Shalom.